Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where Roger and I are here to talk about Roger's favorite magazine, which would be this magazine, a cult detective magazine. Roger reads this thing whenever it comes out. And this is its most recent issue. This is issue number nine from winter for the 2000, for 2022-23. So the winter issue is the last issue that came out of Occult Detective magazine. And this is fantastic. Whole magazine devoted to occult detectives. We've got fiction. We've got nonfiction. This is currently being published. Uh, the editors of this magazine are John Linwood Grant and Dave Berzeski. And it's great. So let's talk about why it's so darn great. First, though, let's talk a little bit about Occult Detectives before we get to Occult Detective magazine. Now, Occult Detectives, investigators into the supernatural, detectives that have to face the weird, the strange, magic, and the supernatural. Occult Detectives have been popular for a long time. They were a staple of the pulps, and they're still popular today. Just look at the ongoing popularity of the Dresden Files, for example. And actually, I guess the X-Files were kind of a supernatural or occult detective show. We had supernatural investigators in that show. They've been around a while. So let's talk about the occult detectives that I think are the most important or influential. First being John Silence. Now, John Silence... He was published, when was he published originally in book form? Uh, the book, John Silence, Physician Extraordinary, came out in 1908. John Silence was an occult detective, an early example of an occult detective. Written by one of the greatest horror writers of all time, Algernon Blackwood. Absolutely classic set of stories. This particular edition is from Dover, and it is edited by S.T. Joshi. Has all of the John Silence stories in it. Fantastic book. I, I highly recommend this. So John Silence, one of the earliest and most important of the occult detectives. Now, not too long after John Silence, Karnacki appeared. Karnacki. Now, Karnacki was created by William Hope Hodson. I have the Karnacki stories in this volume, The Collected Fiction of William Hope Hodgson, Volume 2. I just talked about William Hope Hodgson, what was it, last week? Not too long ago. The Karnacki stories are some of his most popular stories. Excellent set of occult detective stories. Very popular amongst people who like occult detective stories. And an important part of William Hope Hodgson's work. So, highly recommend the Karnacki stories. Another guy who wrote a lot about occult detectives was Manly Wade Wellman. Manly Wade Wellman, who created John Thunstone. John Thunstone. John is a popular name among occult detectives. John Thunstone, who Manly Wade Wellman created and published, or his stories were published in Weird Tales, I believe. Excellent occult detective. Great, great stories about John Thunstone. Manly Wade Wellman actually wrote about a few different occult detectives. So when it comes to authors of occult detective fiction, Manly Wade Wellman is actually pretty important. He did create John the Balladeer as well. One of the most unique characters in fantasy. And John the Balladeer... I think John the Balladeer's stories originally started showing up in the 50s, I believe, in the, fantasy, in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. Great character and a great series of stories. John the Balladeer is not a detective. He's, you know, a balladeer. He, he writes and sings songs up in the mountains and ran into a bunch of supernatural adventures or had a bunch of supernatural advent adventures. I think John actually qualifies, even though he's not a detective, I think he qualifies for being in this genre. 
because yeah his, his adventures against the weird and the unusual I think certainly qualify great character and manly Wade Wellman like I said he wrote a bunch of different characters that could be considered occult detectives but my favorite my favorite occult detective of all time and I think one of the most important was Jules de Grandin. Jules de Grandin, created by Seabury Quinn. So much fun, this set of stories. Now, Jules de Grandin was very popular in the pages of Weird Tales magazine. Actually, Seabury Quinn was probably the most popular writer in Weird Tales. We don't hear much about him. We hear a lot about H.P. Lovecraft, uh, Clark Ashton Smith, and the fantastic Robert E. Howard, deservedly. But Seabury Quinn, not so much. And for, and for a while, his stories were kind of looked down on. But all of his stories are available now. There was a while when it was tough to find his stuff, but all his stories are available in a five-volume set. And this set was published by... <laughs> Let me, let me not get this wrong. This set it was published by Nightshade Books. It was Nightshade. And they, they published this great five-volume hardcover set of Jules de Grandin. And I think they have a new volume out, which is the best of Jules de Grandin, which I don't have because I have all of it. And all of it is the best. I love this character, and I love these stories. Just the ultimate occult detective, Jules de Grandin. So much fun, this set of stories. I did a video on... Seabury Quinn's Jules de Grandin, but it was a while ago, and it's probably time for me to revisit these stories. So, occult detectives, they've always been popular, and so Occult Detective Magazine is a great place to find occult, occult detective fiction nowadays. It originally started out as Occult Detective Quarterly, and it had a different publisher. The publisher was, well, John Linwood Grant helped create this. And he helped create this with Sam Gafford. So Sam Gafford was the original, one of the original publishers of this. Unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, he passed away in 2019. But his magazine, Occult Detective Quarterly, was excellent. Unfortunately, I only have this one issue, number five. But... Just from this, it's an, it was an excellent magazine, Occult Detective Quarterly. This was uh, the winter 2019 issue, full of excellent stuff, including uh, one of my favorite, one of my favorite uh, ongoing features in this magazine, which is a feature called Cold Cases. In this issue, it was uh, written by Dave Brzezeski. I am right on that, right? Yes, Dave Brzezeski wrote, wrote uh, the feature Cold Cases, which uh, is a feature that talks about, uh, it reviews older and maybe lesser known stuff. So it's excellent. Also, great stories and some great nonfiction was published in Occult uh, Detective Quarterly. And all of these issues, all five of them, are still available. It's all print on demand. Which is good, because that means they're not going to run out. You can, you can get these issues. They're all available. Some great artwork uh, in these issues as well. But with the passing of Sam Gafford, who seemed like he was a really interesting guy. He was really interested in William Hope Hodgson. He was a William Hope Hodgson scholar. And he seemed interested in all kinds of cool stuff. Weird and horror fiction. Really interesting fella, it seems like. But when he passed away, you know, the future of Occult Detective was in doubt. But there was an issue six, thank goodness. Now, it changed. The title changed from Occult Detective Quarterly to Occult Detective Magazine. We got this awesome new logo. I love that logo. I think it's fantastic. The quality kept right on with some great artwork. We've got the house on the borderland from William Hope Hodgson on the back there. And it was continued on. John Linwood, Linwood Grant continued on as one of the publishers, but Dave Brzezeski took over. 
he took over for Sam Gafford. And he has an editorial uh, in here where he kind of explains what happened. That's a gr- Speaking of, that's a great uh, picture there of Sam Gafford. Uh, that w- that's fantastic. So that was included in this issue. So this was the first issue of Occult Detective Magazine taking over for Occult Detective Quarterly. And I'm just going to read you a couple paragraphs here to tell you kind of what happened during the transition. A lot happened since our last issue. In particular, we lost our publisher, Sam Gafford, to an unexpected heart attack. We owe Sam an awful lot. He originally conceived the idea for the magazine with John Linwood Grant, long before I got myself involved. He stepped up when our first publisher found himself in over his head and brought Occult Detective Quarterly in under his own Uthar Press imprint. The problems he inherited in doing this were enormous, yet he persevered right up until his death. Losing Sam looked like the end for us, unless we found a new publisher. My partner, Jilly Paddock, immediately suggested that we publish it ourselves. My reply was an instant no way, no how. We simply did not have the income, nor capital to support such a mad venture. But Jilly had also pointed out the synchronicity of stories that had been accepted for publication by Sam's Ulthar Press being rescued by our imprint, which happens to be called Cathaven Press. If anyone reading this doesn't get the inference, go look up H.P. Lovecraft's story, The Cats of Ulthar. It seemed to be fated that we should do this, if only we had the money. Well, they did get the funding, thank goodness, and Occult Detective Magazine continued. And it's great. The quality of the stories and the illustrations and the nonfiction, the nonfiction's really interesting. Uh, and like I said, the artwork is just really cool. So we have a good selection of fiction and nonfiction in this magazine. And you find out about all kinds of cool stuff in here too. There are um, book reviews. We still have my, my favorite feature, Cold Cases, is in here. And it's in every issue, I believe. But a lot of cool, we have interviews, we have fiction. So this was issue number six. It continued on with issue number seven. This was spring 2020. Now, they were wise not to continue calling this a cult detective quarterly because its rate of publication has been uneven. Basically, they put out an issue of Occult Detective Magazine whenever they can. And uh, we get just some excellent stuff. Like this great article, Conan and Karnacki, Robert E. Howard and William Hope Hodgson. You know, I'm a huge Robert E. Howard fan, so I appreciate uh, any time he's mentioned and they have this really cool article about, you know, did Robert E. Howard read Karnacki? And it's just full of cool stuff like that as well as the excellent fiction. Uh, We find out, you know, there, we find out from the reviews about all kinds of different books and horror, horror stories, novels that you might not be aware of. This is the December issue, number eight. This was the first issue that I ever got and I ever read. Fantastic cover. Look at that. Now they did come out with a Cult Detective Magazine number zero, which I do not have, but it is available uh, as a free download. Is it still available? I think. I think it is. All of these you can order and are available right now. And then this is the most recent issue, like I said. This is really cool. It's good timing because we're almost at Horror Mayhem, which is a reading event on BookTube all about reading short form horror fiction, which is what you will find in a cult detective magazine. They also had a couple special publications. This is The Angry Dead by Rosemary Pardo. This is available also, it's an occult detective magazine, special edition from Cat Haven Press. And they also came out with this book, A Solemn Curfew and Other Dark Tales by Bev Allen which is pretty awesome. Look at that. So highly recommend it. It's a great read. I love stuff like this. And 
it's it's a it's a small independent magazine with just a bunch of awesome stuff that you won't find any place else. It's great. A cult de a cult detective magazine. You should read it. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. I will catch you next time.